back to another review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Jackie K, and today we are running amok in Venom 2 Let There Be Carnage, sequel to the so-so 2018 outing. Before we dive in, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to absorb that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. Spoiler warning ahead. The film begins with the flashback at St. Estes Reform School in 1976. Cletus Cassidy is locked in a room and talking through a toilet pipe to his girlfriend Frances Barrison just as she is about to be taken away to be experimented on because of her mutant abilities. I don't know if this signifies that mutants exist in this universe, but moving on. As she's being taken away, she uses her shriek power and gets shot by a young mulligan but survives and wakes up in a special cell in Ravencroft Psychiatric Hospital. We flash forward to present day, they switch actors, and Frances frantically reads through a newspaper to find out that her lover, Cletus, is about to be executed. Cut to Cletus in jail being weird, and then title credits. We cut to Eddie meeting Detective Mulligan, who says Cletus wants to meet with him, and after a few snide remarks, Venom wants to eat him, but Eddie keeps things under control. Eddie reluctantly agrees to meet with Cassidy, and during his visit, Cletus tells him if he prints his poem that he will give Eddie a full exclusive. However, before leaving, Venom points out all the scribblings on Cassidy's wall, and when they get home, Venom draws them out for Eddie. The sketches are of St. Estes and other places, like Rodeo Beach in California, revealing where Cletus had buried all of the bodies. Eddie is branded a hero in the press, and Cassidy's execution is pushed up. Wanting to celebrate, Eddie and Venom hit the streets to get more chickens to feed Venom and stumble upon a back alley robbery, where Venom declares he wants to do hero stuff. But Eddie says they need to stay out of the public eye because the government is still hunting them. During their little adventure, Anne calls Eddie and they go to meet up with her, where she reveals that she's getting married to Dan. This deeply hurts Eddie, so Venom tries to cheer him up, which results in breakfast shenanigans. Going through his mail, Eddie discovers a postcard from Cletus, written in blood about his life, and he also asks Eddie to come to the execution. The next day, Eddie goes to visit Cletus, and they have an overly dramatic conversation, but just as he's about to leave, Cletus grabs him and bites his hand, getting part of the Venom symbiote into his own body. Back at Eddie's apartment, the two have a fight, and Venom decides to strike out on his own. We cut back to the execution, and it all goes wrong as the symbiote protects Cletus, and he officially becomes Carnage. Carnage kills everyone and escapes the prison. The next morning, Eddie is relieved to be by himself and not have another voice in his head, but is interrupted by Mulligan, who is here to let him know that Cletus escaped and, you know, might be coming to kill him. He reveals that Cletus turned into some kind of monster, and that it's eerie that it's always connected to Eddie. Meanwhile, Venom goes to a rave, and a bunch of nonsense scenes unfold of Venom dancing with a bunch of cosplayers. Eddie, however, is trying to investigate where Cletus may have gone, thinking Venom joined him, and goes to St. Estes. There, he discovers a tree carving of Cletus and Francis' initials, and contacts Mulligan. But he tells him that he shot and killed Francis, Cutting back to Cassidy, he kills a bunch of people, uses the internet to find out where Frances is, and breaks her out of prison. However, during their escape, she uses her scream and it hurts Carnage, and it begins a rift between the symbiote and Cletus, as he threatens to kill her if she does it again. Venom finds refuge with Mrs. Chen, and Mulligan investigates the breakout at Ravencroft, and finds out that Frances was alive all along. He hauls Eddie in for questioning, but nothing comes out of it. Eddie turns to Anne to help him find Venom, and she tracks him down to Mrs. Chet, and gets Venom to agree to come back. He joins with her temporarily, and when they meet up with Eddie, Venom forces him to apologize and admit they need each other. Then she helps Eddie escape the police station, and the heroes set out to stop Carnage. 
Cletus captures Mulligan and Dan, using them as bait, and of course, Eddie goes to face the villains. When he arrives, Cletus and Francis are getting married, and then a fight breaks out. During the fight, Carnage tries to kill Shriek because she keeps using her vocal powers, and this makes a symbiotic relationship with Cletus fall apart. So Venom and Eddie use it to their advantage. Eddie punches Shriek into a bell, she screams, makes big sound waves. This detaches Carnage from Cletus, which Venom just reabsorbs, and then he bites Cletus's head off. Venom and Eddie have now got to go on the run, and we cut to the end credits. Halfway through, a post-credit scene plays out. Eddie and Venom are chilling in a hotel watching a telenovela on Spanish TV, when Venom reveals that the symbiotes are a big hive mind and stretch across the multiverse. He wants to give a fraction of that knowledge to Eddie, but just as he's about to, they're hit with some sort of energy wave and suddenly appear in a similar but different hotel room. On the TV, the end of Spider-Man Far From Home plays out with J. Jonah Jameson revealing Spider-Man's identity as Peter Parker. Venom recognizes the costume, but not the Peter underneath, and has no idea how they got here. Overall, the film lacked any kind of cohesive structure or theme. You had corny forced humor moments smashed in with teen drama, and a couple of scenes designed to fit a 2010 PG-13 horror dud. While I love Woody Harrelson in almost everything I've seen him in, he was a pretty terrible fit for Carnage. I would have rather seen Jackie Earl Haley in the role, as he fits the nervous but deadly psychopath personality I remember from the comics. The effects weren't as great this time around, and most of the characters didn't matter. Honestly, if the post credit scene wasn't such an MCU stinger, this film would have missed my radar almost completely. I'm giving the film a 6 out of 10. It just wasn't as enjoyable to watch. Tom Hardy gives it his all, as he always does, but there's only so much you can do with writing like that. I guess we'll have to find out if he'll receive an upgrade when he possibly appears in another MCU film. Third time's a charm. It worked for Thor, after all. I want to thank you all for checking out our video. Please make sure to give it a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Please reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosFat or chat with us on Discord, linked below in the description. Please visit our Patreon, also linked below, to help us keep bringing you new content each week. I've been your host, Jackie K, and before I go, sometimes when you spend all day with your friend, partner, significant other, you can end up getting on each other's nerves. It's good to have your own hobbies and to take breaks from each other. No matter the feelings there, you don't need to spend every minute together. And if you do fight, take a moment, cool off. It's okay to walk away from a heated situation and take a breather. Come back and finish the discussion when you're in a calm state of mind. Thanks again, and as always, take care.